This is an addendum to the 440 Hz to 432 Hz tutorial that I did. And in this tutorial, I'll show you both the previously shown pitch shift module and uh, the newly discovered by me sliding time scale pitch shift module that Audacity has. And um, I didn't know about this other module when I was doing the initial tutorial before. And the way I found out about it was that uh, I actually went on the Audacity's forums to create a post asking them to improve their current pitch shift module. And one of their staff members pointed out to me that they already have a higher quality module called uh, the sliding time scale pitch shift module. And I played around with this module and indeed it does uh, much better higher quality conversion than uh, their pitch shift module does. So let's start converting. Okay, as you can see in the upper right hand corner, the already familiar tuner, uh, which will tell us in which frequency the track is being played in. Let's open up our track in Audacity. Let's check it out. Okay, as you can see, it's in the 440 hertz tuning. So let's now convert it to 432 using the familiar pitch shift method. We're going to go to Effect, Change Pitch, and we did this after we highlighted the whole track. Percent change we're going to put in negative 1.776, which equals if you're doing it from Hertz change, going from 440 to 432.186. Uh, you may have noticed that um, there are two ways of doing this. Some have mentioned the from 440 to 432, which yields the negative 1.818. Uh, but the way I do it is negative 1.776. Now the story behind it is that um, when I was first looking into how to do these conversions, I found this number on the forum a couple of times first. And this is what I've been trying. To, uh, this is basically the percent change that I've been using. And uh, whether there's a difference between this and this, um, I have not been able to notice any difference. It's I think it's so minute. Um, it still hits the 432 uh, hertz scale one way or another. So basically, I'm sure that whether one way or the other, whether you do it this way or the way I do it, um, I'm sure you're still going to be fine. So let me go back. And let's convert it. As you see how fast it converted. So now let's go to 432 hertz. We're going to switch our tuner to that frequency. And let's play it. And there you go, it hits 432. Okay, so this is our the lower quality uh, pitch shift module method. So now let's go and um, convert this track using the new method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this file. Just quit Audacity. And open it up once again. For the sake of this tutorial, let's once again test this initial frequency. Now let's highlight it, and here's what we do. We go to Effect, Sliding Time Scale Pitch Shift. And over here, here's what we do. In the initial and in the final, we type in the same thing. And 
let's click on OK. Now we already notice a big difference. The remaining time, the time that it takes to convert this, is much slower. So this is a good sign, which means that there's more processing involved and the, the final output converted file is going to be of much higher quality. So let's wait. Okay, the file converted. Now let's test it by going to 432. I don't know if you could tell, but the quality is um, significantly better. So there you have it. You can now uh, use this module and you'll get uh, better quality output track from Audacity and you do not have to pay for um, Adobe Audition uh, to get a higher quality track, even though I will admit that the Adobe Editions module, their isotope algorithm that it's used to convert their uh, convert the picture of a track, it's still um, top-notch, it's still the best that I've seen, so still you'll get the best quality tracks possible that I've been able to, uh, that I've worked with uh, from all the software programs that I've tried. But at least with this you'll still get a high quality conversion track. As a note, um, sometimes when you convert a track, what happens is that after the conversion, the, um, the volume of the tracks uh, starts clipping. So what I suggest to do in the case when that happens uh, is to normalize a track. So what we do here is we double click on it, select the whole track, go to effect, normalize, and we can go set this value so it's as close as possible to the highest, um, to the highest peak, but it doesn't, so it does no clipping. And we're going to click on OK. OK, very good. Let's now play it. Beautiful, so there you have it. Okay, so this concludes this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email is freeyourmind432 at gmail.com. I always appreciate any comments or questions that any of you may have. All right, so thank you very much for watching and take care.